this is lecture number two for A levels chemistry. On the left hand side, you can see a diagram 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d. What is this? Okay, have a look on this diagram which is at your right hand side. This is the nucleus and this is the first shell. In the first shell only S subshell is present. In the second shell two subshells S and P is present. In the third shell three subshells S, P, D and in the fourth shell four subshells are present. Similarly this is the first shell. One mean first shell and S mean this is subshell. In the first shell only S subshell is present. In the second shell, you can see in this diagram, in the second shell, two subshells, S and P. So, I can write 2S and 2P. In the second shell, two subshells are present. In the third shell, how many subshells? 3, S, P, D. So, in the third shell, 3 mean third shell. In three subshells are present, S, P and D. In the fourth shell, four subshells are present. Similarly, in the fifth shell, four subshells are present. So, if you don't know about the shell, subshell and orbitals, then you should listen my lecture number one. Okay, how electrons fill in these subshells? There are three rules for filling the electrons. First rule is off bar principle. The name of the rule is not included in the Cambridge syllabus, but uh, what is the rule? Rule is electron first fill those orbitals which has less energy or you can say that those subshells which are nearer to the nucleus. So look at this diagram. Which subshell is nearer to the nucleus? Definitely 1s, then 2s, then 2p. So according to this diagram, now we will fill the electron in the subshells. This is the 1s. First electron will go into the first sub subshell that name is 1s. Then electron will go into the second shell. The name of the second subshell is 2s. After the 2s, the further electron will go into the 2p and after 2p the further electron will go into the 3s. Similarly, after the 3s the electrons will go into the 3p then electron will go into the 4s. After 4s electron will go into the 3d and then 4p and then 5s. There is a little bit confusion. After 3p, most of the students ask, after 3p, electron should go into the 3d. No, after 3b, electron will go into the 4s according to off bar principle. Why? Because 4s subshell is nearer to the nucleus as compared to 3d but how is it possible as this 4s in 4s s subshell is present in fourth shell and in this case d subshell is present in third shell so everyone say that d subshell is ne nearer to the nucleus no look at this diagram suppose this is the nucleus and this is the 3d This is the 3D diagram and after 3D, after 3D, which subshell should present S, 4S. So, what is the shape of 4S? This is the nucleus and for the 4S, this is the 4S. This is 4S and this is 3d now you can see that 3d or uh, subshell 
is more further away from the nucleus as compared to 4s. So, from this picture, we can uh, see that now electron will enter into the 4s first and then electron will go into the 3d. Okay, let's start the electronic configuration. Suppose we want the electronic configuration of sodium, okay, sodium has 11 electron, so first electron will go into the 1s, then electron will go into the 2s and then after 2s electron will go into the 2p and after 2p electron will go into the 3s okay how many electrons can reside in s two electrons okay how many electron will reside in s again two electron in p subshell maximum six electrons can reside so count the electron two plus two four plus six ten and sodium has 11 electron one electron is left so 3s1 this is the electronic configuration of sodium. Okay. How, where are the orbitals? Now, I will draw the orbitals. S subshell has one orbital, so there is only one box for the S orbital. And how many electrons? Two electrons. This is the first electron. This is the second electron. But here, there is a rule. For the electrons, uh, each arrow is representing one electron. You can see that one arrow is upside and the direction of the second arrow is downward. What is the reason behind this? Because in the orbital, electron spin. This is the, suppose this is the electron, and one electron spin clockwise, and the second electron spin anti-clockwise direction. What is the logic? behind this spinning of electron when an electron spin it produces the magnetic field suppose this electron is spinning in clockwise direction we can assume that it will produce the magnetic field north pole will be upside and south pole will be downside and this electron is spinning in anti-clockwise direction so this will uh, spinning uh, electron are moving particle always produce the magnetic field so this is the charged particle and this is moving spinning so this electron will also produce the magnetic field but due to the anti-clockwise direction north pole will be downward and south pole will be upward so this magnetic field will cancel the effect of each other so two electrons can reside in an orbital this is the logic how two electrons can reside in a single orbital? All, uh, both electrons have negative charge. So how can two electrons can reside? This is the reason because electrons are spinning in the opposite direction. So this rule is Pauli's exclusion principle. You don't know, you don't need to remember the name of the scientist, but remember the rule in an orbital, two electrons must have opposite spin. Okay. 1s2, 2s again s subshell has one electron, uh, two electrons, uh, one orbital and two electrons can reside. This is the 2s and s subshell has one orbital and one orbital can accommodate only two electrons. This is 2p. p subshell has three orbitals. So we will make three orbitals. 2px, 2py, and 2pz. How many electrons we have to fill? 6 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And again, 3s, s subshell has 1 orbital. So here is 3s and 1 electron. You have a choice. You can 
add draw the arrow upward or downward it's totally up to you okay there is another method of electronic configuration and the method is this this is the energy line and energy is increasing upward here is the nucleus this is the nucleus and when you go away from the nucleus energy increases so which orbital is closest to the nucleus or which subshell is closest to the nucleus 1s then 2s then 2p okay so first of all if we do the electronic configuration of sodium so electron first go into the 1s so this is the 1s and two electrons will go after 1s electron will go into the 2s and 2s is far away from 1s from the nucleus more far away as compared to 1s so here is the 2s because you see it is more away from the nucleus then 2p 2p has three orbital and these three orbital have the same distance from the nucleus so but these 2p orbitals are more far away as compared to 2s you can see this diagram in the second shell first s subshell is present and then p subshell is present so p is more further away this is the p 2px 2py and 2pz and how many electrons six electrons you can draw half arrow if you want to save time and then 3s this is 3s okay now uh, I will write the electronic configuration for the nitrogen nitrogen has seven electrons so first electron will go into the 1s then electron will go into the 2s then electron will go into the 2p then 3s so 1s 2 2s 2 and how many electrons are left you have to fill seven electrons 2 plus 2 4 3 electrons are left so 2p 3 now make the orbitals s has one orbital 1s and two electrons are present with opposite spin you can draw the half arrows in the second 2s s subshell has again one orbital and two electrons must have opposite spin 2p has three electron and you have three orbital what would be the pattern of filling the electron can this pattern is right two electron in the 2px and one remaining electron is 2py no this is wrong so what will be better method is when you have degenerate orbitals degenerate orbitals mean those orbitals which have same energy which have same distance from the nucleus when degenerate orbitals are present these are the degenerate orbitals 2px 2py 2pz and more than one electron is to be placed more than one electron is to be placed in this orbital then electron will remain unpaired with same spin like this one electron in 2px one electron is in 2py and the third electron is in 2pz so this would be pattern when you will fill the electron the name of this rule is hund's rule this is hund's rule okay now I do the electronic configuration of oxygen oxygen has eight electron 1s2 2s2 and 2p4 again this is 1s this is 2s and p subshell has three orbitals 2px 2py and 2pz now again we will apply the Hund's rule four electrons and three orbital first you will add the electron but unpaired in these orbitals and after after this how many electrons are still left one electron is left 
So now it's totally up to you. You can add the fourth electron into px. You can add the fourth electron into py or into pz. I add the fourth electron into px. So this is the electronic configuration of oxygen. 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, 2py1 and 2pz. Now we do the electronic configuration of ion. Electronic configuration of ions. Suppose you have to do the electronic configuration of H minus 1 hydride ion. Okay. Now look at the periodic table and see how many electrons are present in the hydrogen 1. So what would be electronic configuration 1s1 like this. But in H minus 1 how many electrons 2 electrons are present so electronic configuration would be 1s2. Similarly if you want to do the electronic configuration of magnesium 2 plus. So first of all look how many electrons are present in magnesium atom 12 electron and in magnesium ion how many electrons 10 electrons. So electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2 and 2p6. This is the electronic configuration of magnesium. And what is the electronic configuration of magnesium atom? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and 3s2. When you will make ion, outermost electrons are lost first. When magnesium will lose two electrons, those electrons which are present in the outermost shell will lost first. Similarly, what is the electronic configuration of N3 minus? Okay, first of all, uh, look at the periodic table and tell how many electrons are present 7 when nitrogen will gain 3 electron the total electron would be 10 so you will write the electronic configuration of 10 electron just like magnesium 1s2 2s2 and 2p6 and what is the electronic configuration of nitrogen? 1s2, 2s2 and 2p3. Okay, now last thing is if you want to electronic configuration of that element which has more electron like calcium. Calcium has 20 electrons. So electronic configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6 and 4s2. If you want to save time and you don't want to write a very long electronic configuration then how can you save the time 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 10 electrons, 12 electrons and 18 electrons. Which noble gas has 18 electrons? If you look at the periodic table you, uh, you will see that argon. Argon has 18 electrons so you don't need to write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Instead of this, you can write argon and then 4s2. Always select the element from the noble gas. If you select any other element, then it would be 